Well, thanks a lot, y'all, for joining uh, another Manage Engineering Product Biweekly. Really excited uh, to talk about um, kind of what's on your mind. Thanks a lot to Dennis and Martin and Dan and Liam and others for adding to the agenda. Um, Dennis, take it away. Yeah, so I'll do my best to summarize this because the heading for this agenda point started with a couple things floating in my head. And um, I think six points later, it became several things floating in my head. Uh, and obviously this is workflow and process related. And basically what I'm trying to go after before we start diving into these points is, you know, we have a defined process right now currently uh, in the managed page, in the managed team page about how we approach estimation, prioritization, our commitments to said prioritizations and so on. Um, and I've started seeing different groups, you know, wanting to try their own things. And um, I mean, part of this is also understanding, you know, if, if we are trying different things, are there issues with how we currently have things defined as, as a stage? Um, if not, or if so, like what are those? And perhaps, you know, the things we are trying could be applicable to other groups. At the same time, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit that we're prematurely trying different things because I don't know if things, how, um, if the current process is working or not. Uh, so basically it kind of goes into a couple of different items here uh, we're probably going to be jumping around a, a little bit, so I apologize for that. Um, the first thing being this on deck, on deck label, which we've spoken about um, in a couple of meetings, but we haven't really, we've tried, ex we started experimenting with it, but we haven't added it to the handbook. Obviously, the goal for this is to kind of figure out a best way, the best way to organize issues that we want to groom or discuss for upcoming milestones right now, really. It's just for the, the upcoming milestone. So um, there's something, so we, we, the idea was that the on-deck label encapsulates all issues that are basically in every workflow stage up till it's ready for development, right? So it could be problem solution, validation, design, breakdown, whatever. It basically just means this is not ready to schedule um, and requires some type of input from someone to move that towards being ready to schedule. And so that's what the on-deck label tried to solve. I know we already have a ton of different workflow labels, let alone labels themselves. Um, so that's what the on-deck label was trying to solve. Uh, that way, you know, we can try to minimize the amount of areas that people, our, our engineers and ICs have to look at in terms of like the build board and the planning board. It's just here, here's this list of on-deck issues that you and your team should be looking at. So... I, I wanted to get people's thoughts on that. Also, I know that Harris has proposed using a workflow refinement label, um, which I think might be tricky given that it may not clearly indicate what we need to refine. So uh, I know there's some points here, so please uh, verbalize and thanks for listening. So for import, the uh, refinement label seems to be kind of, uh, um, seems to be helping a lot because uh, we did not have a way of indicating uh, things that we're considering for the next one or two milestones and that also need the breakdown that are not ready for development. So to get them ready for development, we use the refinement label so that um, we can easily find the things that we need to work in async fashion over the next month to get them to ready for development. So just, um, it was... It seemed like a good indication at like the word makes sense. Uh, so we just used it. Uh, I'm open to any kind of other indication, but this is something that seems to work for the flow. So I, I definitely understand the rationale there. Um, I think, I, I think I'm like most PMs where I have just like a, 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 a visceral reaction to more labels. It's like, Oh God, gross. Um, but then like, ironically, I love on deck and I can't explain it. That's, I guess, just what an opinion is. But um, I, I realized as Dennis was giving the brief though, that we have on deck and it's been working great, but like, can't we achieve the same thing if we just use like next one to three milestones? Uh, if, you know, because that's typically the intent of the on deck label anyway. And so if we're being more deliberate about, hey, let's use this existing functionality and say, these are the next one to three milestones worth of work that we're looking at. And then if that gets like convoluted or ex extends to include a lot of other stuff, then I feel like that's more of mismanaging that particular milestone. Um, 
So Matt, just, let me let me try and throw a wrench in those gears. <laughs> How dare uh, you? <laughs> I feel like the milestone is sort of a promise. Like customers pay attention to that milestone. And when we say next one to three milestones, they expect it in the next one to three months. Uh, and when we label something as on deck, we don't know if we're going to be able to, to get it prepared in the next one to three months. We don't know, you know, we don't know if we can make a commitment to a milestone yet, which I, I think the whole point of the refinement process, right? We're trying to figure out if we can make a commitment. Um, so I, I see applying a milestone, any milestone, even next one to three or whatever, as a commitment to timeline that I'm not sure we're ready to make, which is why I'm really liking the on-deck label too, because it kind of separates those two things. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. I mean, that's valid. And my, my counter to that might be, um, like, I agree with you that it's, it's basically a promise or like setting an expectation, but in the same in the same vein, uh, GitLab moves so quickly and priorities change so often that like, even if I put a specific milestone, like 13.0, there's a, there's a decent chance that that's gonna change to like 13.1, might even go back to backlog, that kind of thing. So I feel like there's already this paradigm uh, of expectation with customers that, yeah, it's, it's what GitLab is planning for and what they're hoping to accomplish, um, but may change. Um, so I, I don't necessarily, like I don't, it doesn't have to be the one to three. It was food for thought of like, could we eliminate one more label? But if on deck is consensus, then I'm good with it. I, I see the same way, Matt. Uh, so next one to three is actually what we use instead of on deck in import. So for import, we don't put anything on deck. Uh, we just look at everything that's next one to three. And if you really look at the kind of a confidence level as you go out in time, your confidence is just less and less. So, you know, things that are inside a milestone that are currently being worked on, if you look at our kind of a promise there is that, yeah, about 70, 80% of those we kind of think are gonna make it. Uh, you look at further down, one to three, three to four, you know, uh, seven to 14, what's the chance that something that's a seven to 14 right now will make it exactly in seven to 14, I'd say 10 to 20%. So, you know, the confidence level just naturally goes down as you go further out. So I feel like if I put something in the next one to three, it's like this is generally what we're going to be working on. And, you know, hopefully more than half of these things are going to be delivered in that. But some things will be moved up, some things will be moved down. And, you know, there's, 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 not, there's just a confidence level. It's not a 100% promise uh, that whatever is in one to three is going to get delivered exactly in one to three. I feel like we shouldn't use it then because like, like we're, we're doing double duty where we have this milestone that we're using for our internal organization purposes of like only finding the stuff that we're trying to actively refine. And also we're making and we're setting expectations when the thing is going to be delivered by attaching this label to it. People call us out on like the fact that, oh, this issue has been sitting in, in, you know, next, you know, four to seven for, you know, two years. Like what is going on with this? And I, I, I said, like, ideally, like, we should be using these, these directional milestones, like, as little as possible. Like, we should be able to, like, if the purpose of this, of on deck, which I do find really useful, which is, this is a subset of issues, you know, that's no more than two dozen issues at the very most that we're trying to refine and then getting, uh, getting those over to, getting them scheduled for a specific milestone. That's super useful. Like, the last release... I labeled a bunch of stuff with on deck. I said, hey, Liam, here's a URL to like the on deck label. Could you like take a look at these issues? And then we burned through the list and then moved all those off of like, moved, moved all those off of on deck. And it was great. Um, but I just, I still feel like by using the on deck label and like having that be analogous to like next one to three that we're tying this to some time frame, And I just don't think that's like the purpose of the problem that we're trying to solve with this. It's all for internal organization. We should just not make a reference that customers can like attach themselves to in my opinion. I, I agree with that. I think you summarized that well, Jeremy. I, I feel like when we've looking at last year, when we've assigned stuff to future milestones, it's more gut feel where we would like to deliver it, not where we think it's going to be delivered based on any sort of data. Um, I spoke with Harris about this. I personally would feel more comfortable if there was just like one big backlog. And as you said, maybe just very few issues where we're confident that they will be delivered within that, that kind of period that, that we're, that we're expecting. Um, that, that seems to work to me. And, and I, I my probably the second point to add there would be, therefore, I don't see any value in going beyond one to three because you have no idea whether something's going to be delivered in four to seven milestones or, or beyond.
Well, and there's also, to add on to that, uh, there's also the dynamic uh, that PMs aren't, shouldn't be scheduling, which next one to three, like directional milestones are considered scheduling, right? Until there's thumbs up from both PM and engineering. Uh, so from that perspective, I think it would make sense to keep on deck because that's how I guess we would say, hey, we got to collaborate on this, let's refine it, and then we schedule it. Uh, so scheduling it seems not the right approach. I find the next one to three, three to four, four to seven milestones to be helpful for me in sort of segmenting the backlog. So if you look at the backlog, which is, you know, 500 items in it right now, uh, you know, the, the priority of these items shifts as people move things in and out of these. Uh, so this is helpful to me to sort of have a segment of things that I know I want to do, you know, really kind of near term, some segment of things that I think I want to get done, you know, in the next quarter or so, and the other is like rest of the year, whatever those three, you know. Uh, so it's helpful to me to segment the backlog and keep it organized in a way that nobody can mess up by, you know, just moving things around. So that's, that's where I find it um, helpful. And then, so for, for, for import, we put things into next, uh, next one to three milestones and we mark it as uh, like either work for refinement or whatever we decide, like you know, if it's on that, it doesn't matter. It seems to be more of a religious thing. It's like, well, one team uses this, therefore likes it, and the other team uses this other thing, therefore likes it. I don't know that we even have to come up with, um, with a solution. Uh, maybe let people experiment and talk about it in a little bit and see how it kind of works over time. So I, I guess to, to that point though, in terms of seg segmenting the backlog, would, could you not do that like with priority labels or another way which doesn't set a customer expectation? I, I guess the problem with doing it with priority labels is if you have P1 to P4, your P4 stuff would never get worked on, right? Because you're or, always or P, or P, from or the P3. top. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but maybe coming up with like a separate way of doing that where you achieve the same thing without setting the customer expectations of setting a milestone is a, is a way to go forward. I think there's yeah, a... That's, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest because one thing that I've done in the past is having like next, some like something that doesn't imply time, right, but in, implies priority sort of uh, for us, right, as PMs where it's like next, um, I forget, there's like three different labels, um, something else and then backlog, right, where backlog is something that's like way out and you just categorize them that way so that way it helps us right keep track of what we're when the, that's basically what Harris is saying and I agree right like it helps you keep track of what you want to work on without having this like huge backlog right then kind of like near term mid term long term actually that's what we could use um, and it doesn't set an expectation of time right it's gen general enough where like someone can't say like well you haven't done this midterm because it's like what does midterm mean <laughs> it can mean a lot of things but it helps us stay organized yeah and, and it really wouldn't matter what we call these uh for my purpose so for purpose of me segmenting the backlog and queuing things up uh you know they don't have to be named something but these are generic enough to where like you know next four to seven i don't know if people really look at that and then wait four to seven milestones to ping us i don't know like maybe but i also have noticed that since I've been doing this, that uh, I was able to move things from next one to three into the next milestone and then refill it from the three to four and then move things from four to seven up. So for me, things are moving that direction. And the, the one way to manage it is I put whip limits on each one of these to sort of reflect the about throughput of the team so that I don't have more than 30 items in three to four or 20 items once or whatever, whatever the width limits are, so that if we just burn those um, kind of on the average, things will align and things will line up. So uh, there's a way to actually keep that promise too. Like, I don't mind uh, people looking at things and saying that this is next one to three. And if we know that there is always a 70% you know, chance of us meeting that, um, that may be good enough. Like, I'm okay with moving to more generic, but I feel like if we put lip, whip limits on these and don't use these just as endless buckets, but they're realistic buckets of things we can do in three to four, we can do in four to seven, then um, you know it's okay to promise that and keep the promise too. Because it does help people to know that this is 
I mean, this many milestones away, approximately. I mean, these are really wide buckets. I, I, I agree with you, Harris. Like, when I, I'll say that, like, I feel like we should also have some discretion to individual product managers to like how they want, how they feel like they want to plan. Some product managers might feel comfortable with like scheduling issues out six months for specific milestones. Some might do what you do, which I think is a great practice, which is using directional milestones with whip limits and then like cascading those into specific epics as we like refine. Um, I, I think that the, whenever we've talked about like the one to three and then the four to five or whatever the, the next one is, I can't remember now, um, milestone, it's the, the discussions always come up. Well, it's like, well, if we're looking at like something that's so close, why don't we just put those issues into the specific milestone so that we can like set exactly what the, those timing expectations are. So it's either like we're still figuring the issue out or we understand kind of where it is and where it's going to sit in our near term roadmap and then it gets a specific milestone, which I honestly don't disagree with to, to, to a large degree. So um, Melissa, sorry, you're about to say something. Um, yeah, I just think like um, I agree in principle with like if we're so close, we should just schedule it. I think in practice, what I find is a lot of times you need to move stuff out, right? Because <laughs> other things happen and then you're reshuffling. So I think like waiting until the last responsible moment and people can decide what their last responsible moment is, right? To set a specific milestone on something is better than like setting milestones and then changing them. Yeah, Jeremy, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with Melissa on we should, I mean, we should wait until the last moment to put those in, in, in the release because we will change our mind. Things that are in one to three are mostly in refinement for me. So they are still trying to, we're still trying to be figure, to figure out like what can be done in the first, what can be done in the second, what's going to be in the third milestone. Like one to three is a range. And depending on what the refinement turns out to be, there may be more issues, we'll break down issues than, than we can actually take. And I think that also the other point is, I think it's, it should be the, the engineers who pull things into a milestone. I feel like the, there's a divider, for me, at least in my mind, there's a divider between backlog and uh, things in the milestone. And the things get pushed up, moved across that line, pulled across that line by the engineers. And that milestone sits for me, or the line sits between next one to three and a numbered milestone. Like next one to three is as close as I can get it. I think the engineers need to then commit to delivering it in a particular month. So that's why I feel like me putting that into 13.0 and 13.1 and 13.2 um, is, is against, against kind of that rule of teams organ self-organizing and just picking what they want to work on. Cool. Um so I, I proposed, so I'll, I, in the nature of time, I, I proposed in item four there, two, four, um, renaming next one to three to near term. I'm actually going to revise that and suggest that we just create like a near term, like milestone. And we use that as kind of the on deck label one to three. If that's useful for folks, they can continue using that. And that's one, and that's great. But I propose here that we don't use the on deck label. We use, we create a milestone that's called near term because that was a great term that Melissa suggested. Issues get refined there. And then the P, and then we can, the PM makes a decision on whether or not they go to the backlog, a directional milestone, a specific milestone. But that helps us kind of focus all the thousands of issues that we have. Here are the dozen that we're trying to figure out actively and get those to some resolution. Can I ask what's the difference between that new milestone and the on deck label? One is a label and one is a milestone. <laughs> so to, for, for that reason, if they're, if they're just identical, can we just pick one rather than needing to deal that's, with both? That's what I'm saying. So no okay. on deck label, I'm proposing a milestone. And the reason that I like milestones more is because it's a, you can only have a single milestone on a label. If something is being refined, it inherently cannot have a milestone, on, a specific milestone on it. It has to have this on deck next up milestone on it. And also issues can have 50,000 labels on them. It gets confusing to, to see and find and parse. So I, I find milestone uh, what might be best here, but that's my- I found, I found milestone to be, yeah, sorry, go ahead then. I'm not totally opposed to that. It makes me uncomfortable though, just because customers and internally at GitLab were conditioned to look at milestone and consider it a promise. And even putting near term there without input from engineering, we don't know if this can be done in the near term. Um, you know, like with analytics, I've run into a lot of issues that were considered near term and couldn't have been near term, no way. 
So I'm just uncomfortable with that conditioned expectation of a promise with milestone. That's fine. Uh, can we refine the the, the term? Uh, maybe in, in a merger, in a, I'll open a, I'm happy to open a merge request to suggest something. We can like refinement priority or something to that effect that doesn't have a time frame attached to it. And maybe you know, we can also uh, clarify some of those expectations. As in, what does it mean when something is one to three or three? Like, what is our percentage? Like, even with the P1 through P4, we tell you that, you know, these, you know, most of these are going to get done. Some of these are going to get done. A uh, few of these are going to get done. Like, there's a inherent promise of like P3, 50% of those are going to get delivered in the milestone. So, uh, you know, maybe we need to also clarify that for our milestones the further out they go, that, uh, you know, less precise that is. I mean, it's just how life is and how things will be regardless of what we say. But if we're not stating that and people are, uh, you know, taking next three to four to mean exactly in three or four months and nothing else, then that, that needs to be clarified. That's a good point. Like maybe we say like near term means we're evaluating it actively, right? And depending on what happens, right, it may end up going into the next milestone or it may go back to the backlog if we see that it's, you know, too big. Um, so I'm hearing a couple of different things here. I mean, I think the label reduces a little bit of the spotlight from customers and users, right? And then, but the milestone also reduces label fatigue. Um, but if we do set that in the milestone, then we should be, I mean, either way we go, we definitely need to define it in our managed team page. And then maybe that's just, we have to, and, and by going with the milestone option, we, we may be signing on to take on that work to, to educate the users and customers within manage to uh, to understand that this is not a, a, a promise that we're trying to make. Am I understanding that correctly? I'm just trying to summarize. That's my understanding. It makes sense to me. D does someone so, want to volunteer to open up a merge to start the merge request on this into the uh, manage page? I'd be happy to take that on since I, I opened the Pandora's box of <laughs> many workflow topics. Um, and then maybe perhaps that's where we can do the voting then uh, in terms of where we'd like to, to land in terms of the uh, label or milestone approach. So yeah, we're there's nothing wrong forcing with it. Anything. I mean, yeah. We should probably just try it. I mean, this iteration, let's try it for a milestone or two, see how we like it, see what feedback we get from people, how many people are confused, how many people love it, and we'll talk about it again once the experiment's over. I mean, it's, it's just how for we sure. remember, right? You're here. And, and that's... And that's what I'm trying to get when, with the, the beginning of this is that I, I want us to continue to explore and experiment. And I also want groups to have the freedom to do so as well. It's just, I think if we start discussing it first at, with a common approach, then we might have obviously different perspectives um, that might find out why or why not that something works. Um, just to your point, Harris, before about like, you know, one group likes using one thing, one like group using, is using the other. That's, that's totally fine, but if we're doing the same thing, I'd like to try to consolidate that because obviously it's, a, it's creating a little bit more overload um, mentally for, for me um, and, and Liam and, and Dan, since we're, we are spread across different groups. That's okay, but I just wanna make sure that we're, we're, we're aware of that and we're documenting that so that we are, you know, in the case of my example, if I'm going to a different group, I can look at the group page and be like, here's what we do to designate issues that we're refining. And, I, and then, I, then I don't have to, you know, be more clueless than I usually am about what, what, what's going on. <laughs> and maybe each group can provide a filtered board that it's like, here's our refinement. This, this is our filter for refinement. And you just click on one of the four links and it takes you to whatever that group decides is refinement. I mean, we can, we can fix that problem probably by just providing a board. And I already have a board like that, that I, I can share. For sure. So I will create that merge request. Um, out of respect for time, <laughs> I think we need to save the other points for another time. Um, I do, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the discussion and I thank everyone for verbalizing or adding your, your thoughts uh, on the agenda. I would like to perhaps suggest that we turn this for now uh, into what Matt mentioned, a weekly series. Uh, <laughs> so that we can continue to get through some of these. I, I do want to iterate across the, these, but I do think there's some value in trying to group some of these changes uh, so that we're not constantly tweaking the process and re-educating our, our, our groups around this. Um, so that the good. more we can discuss this, I, I would appreciate that personally. It sounds good. And I will uh, jump ahead to the, to the, to item five where, um, you know, you called out the, 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 um, 
I guess item four, that I removed a priority label by accident in MR, I'll revert that change and we can um, uh, realign on those priority labels and then discuss them next week in more detail. But um, did not mean to remove that from the page. I'll be sure to add that back in. But the intent is um, to continue to use them until we discuss and agree otherwise. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks. How for did we ever live week. without this meeting? This meeting has been so good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I scheduled this a while back and I was worried that be we, we wouldn't have uh, have agendas and wasted and be a poor use of time. It's been the absolute opposite. So thank you all for such great contributions and discussion. I really appreciate it. Well, it's good seeing everyone. Thanks for the conversation. For sure. Yeah. Thanks all. Cheers all. Have a good weekend. Have a, good, have a good, great weekend. Bye. See you.